10 Surprising and Shocking Facts About Equatorial Guinea Equatorial Guinea is a small West African country bordered on the north by Cameroon, the south by Gabon, and the west by the Atlantic Ocean. The country has a diverse and stunning landscape. In the interior, beautiful beaches and coastal plains give way to undulating hills. Mountain peaks, volcanoes, and a diverse range of fauna may be found on the five islands that make up the archipelago. There are plenty of beaches, jungles, and natural wonders to see in Equatorial Guinea. Being a small country located on the west coast, it has an area of 11,000 square miles and is made up of both mainland and island districts. Previously, this country was known as Spanish Guinea. They were ultimately able to break free from colonialism in 1968. The country's primary language is Spanish. They do, however, speak French and Portuguese. These three languages are also recognized as the official languages of the country. This is the only country in the world where Spanish is spoken as a first language. It also earned its name from its proximity to the equator and the Gulf of Guinea. It's not difficult to comprehend. Equatorial Guinea is also unique in that, despite being Africa's smallest country, it is a member of the United Nations. This country has a fascinating past as well as a distinct current status. President Teodoro Obiang Ma has ruled Equatorial Guinea since August 3, 1979. After deposing his uncle, Masha's Ma, below is a look at 10 surprising and shocking facts about Equatorial Guinea. Stay with us as we begin the countdown. 10. It has the distinction of being the smallest African country to join the United Nations. Most African countries, with the exception of small island nations, coastline nations, and Equatorial Guinea, cover a large area. On November 12, 1968, this country was admitted to the United Nations. Equatorial Guinea joined the United Nations at the same time as the smallest African country in terms of total land area. Equatorial Guinea consists of the Rio Muni mainland and five volcanic outlying islands in Central Africa. Malabo, the country's capital and a hub for the country's thriving oil sector, is located on Bayaco Island and features Spanish colonial architecture. Equatorial Guinea is approximately 351 times smaller than the size of the United States of America. Equatorial Guinea is 28,051 square kilometers in size, making it 0.29% the size of the United States. 9. Considered an authoritarian society, the government of Equatorial Guinea is regarded as despotic, and the country's human rights record is among the worst in the world. Equatorial Guinea is ranked seventh in the annual Freedom in the World Survey, which evaluates political and civil rights around the world. The scale ranges from one to seven. Human trafficking, which exploits women and children for forced labor and the sex industry, is also a big social issue in this country. In this country, beatings, abuse, torture, unlawful incarceration, and unexplained deaths are all common kinds of mistreatment. 8. It has a population of less than 1 million people. Equatorial Guinea is one of 10 African countries with a population of less than 1 million people, according to predictions. Despite the fact that the country's estimated population for 2015 is just 845,060, the 2015 census results suggest that the country has a population of over 1.2 million people. This type of contradictory information is frequent in countries with insecure regimes. 7. They are currently constructing a new capital, which is expected to be completed in 2022. Malabo, Equatorial Guinea's current capital, situated on the island of Bioko's Bioko North area, some 25 miles from Cameroon's shore. This city has a population of over 187,000 inhabitants. The local economy is based on public administration and the fishing industry. On the other side, the government of this country is planning a new capital city. The city of Weala is situated in the Wheel and Zas province of the mainland area. Because of its strategic location, adjacent to the Mangueman airport and halfway between Bata and Mongomo, this area was chosen. In Oyala, the police and military will have a new headquarters. Everyone is involved. The president, his administration, the government, and Congress. 
It will cover a total of 20,139 acres and comprise several presidential residences as well as a new Congress building. It is expected to have a population of around 200,000 people once completed. 6. It is one of Africa's wealthiest countries. Equatorial Guinea is a major oil producer in Africa. It is one of Africa's wealthiest countries, with a gross domestic product, GDP, of $31.769 billion, adjusted for purchasing power parity. When compared to its population size, this country has a GDP per capita of $38,699, adjusted for purchasing power parity. Equatorial Guinea has become one of the greatest oil-producing countries in sub-Saharan Africa during the 1990s, and it is presently Africa's richest country per capita. In terms of gross domestic output per capita, it is ranked 43rd in the world. 5. It is one of the only nations in the world without a mainland capital. Malabo, the country's current capital, is one of the few capitals outside of a country's continental region in the world. The first immigrants to arrive were Portuguese sugarcane farmers who failed miserably in their attempts to create a company. Despite the fact that colonization efforts were mostly fruitless, the Spanish eventually acquired control. The city was later given to the British, who used it to fight the ongoing slave trade in Africa. Its population grew as a result of British efforts to free slaves. Many descendants of these freed slaves have remained on the island. In 1855, the city grew to become the nation's capital. 4. The vast majority of its residents live in poverty. The wealth of this country is not evenly distributed among its residents. In reality, the vast majority of the country's citizens are poor and lack access to safe drinking water. Only about a quarter of its children leave to be five years old, and only about a quarter of infants receive polio and measles vaccinations, one of the lowest rates in the world. Only half of students complete elementary school, and only a quarter continue on to secondary school. In the United Nations Human Development Index, Equatorial Guinea is placed 144. 3. It is Sub-Saharan Africa's third largest oil exporter. Equatorial Guinea relies on oil to keep its economy afloat as one of Africa's leading producers. Crude petroleum, worth $4.1 billion, accounting for 69% of the country's total exports. With a value of $1.39 billion, petroleum gas comes in second, accounting for 23% of total exports. These exports help the country's favorable trade balance of $4.28 billion, which comprises $5.92 billion in exports and $1.64 billion in imports. 2. Equatorial Guinea's president has been in office since 1979. Teodoro Obiang, the current president of Equatorial Guinea, has been in office since August 1979. As president, he wields great power and serves as both the head of state and the head of government. His son is the state's vice president. Since Obin gained office, at least 12 attempts to undermine the administration have been made. Human Rights Watch equates his presidency to that of a dictator, and a number of organizations claim that the country's elections were manipulated. Obin has been the subject of a number of inquiries, including by the French government. He's been accused of wasting public funds in France by purchasing expensive homes and cars. 1. It is Africa's only country with Spanish as an official language. From 1778 to 1810, then again from 1844 to 1968, Equatorial Guinea was a Spanish colony. Because of its long influence, Spanish has remained an important language in the country. Equatorial Guinea is the only African country whose official language is Spanish. It is spoken by around 67.6% .6 of the population. The government and education use Spanish as the official language. Equatorial Guinea isn't much of a match for other countries when it comes to adequate benefits for its citizens and other fundamentals. However, it is safe to say that this country has a possibility to progress in the future. The country may be entering a new era with the development of a new capital on the mainland. With being said, 
You should come here if you want to meet amazing people and learn more about their culture. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to Africa Reloaded for more content.